Hey mates, how are you doing? Today we're gonna prove a very interesting and important theorem among many branches of mathematics. And that is the Cantor's theorem. First of all, let's try to understand what our theorem actually says. Take any set A and its power set. Then our result implies that no function from A to its power set is subjective. That is, you can choose any function f that goes from a to its power set. This function f is never gonna be subjective, because there's always gonna be some element in the power set of a that is not in the range of f. I know it might sound a little bit confusing, but it is actually quite simple. So let's take a look at some examples and sketch out some stuff. So suppose you have a set a that has, I don't know, two elements, one and two. Then take the power set of this set. If you try to draw a function from a to the power set of a, you are always going to fail to make your function subjective. For instance, consider the function f1 that assigns to each element x of a the subset of a that only contains x. If we plug the number 1 into this function, our output will be the set that only contains the number 1, and the same for the number 2. You see what happens here? There are elements in our codomain, the power set of a, that are not in our relation f1. And hence, f1 cannot be subjective. We could also choose an f2 that does the exact opposite of what f1 does. I mean, for the number 1, let's sign it a subset of a that does not contain it. Same for 2. Similarly to our form example, f2 isn't subjective either. Well, for any set a that is finite, it is quite intuitive to know that there can't be a subjection from a to its power set, since a will always have fewer elements. More precisely, the power set of a will always have 2 to the n elements, n being the number of elements of a. Alright, but what if a is infinite? What Cantor was able to prove is that even if a is not finite, the cardinality of a power set of a, or the number of elements of a, is always going to be strictly greater than that of a. And to do that, we first assume to the contrary that there is a subjection f from a to its power set. Then, we define a set B such that if X is an element of B, then X is not an element of its own image through F. That is, if we plug X into our function F, our output will be a set that might or might not contain X. If it doesn't contain X, we add X to B, otherwise we just ignore it. Yeah, we can totally do that. In fact, we did this with our previous function F2. B, in that case, will be the whole range of F2. And if we took f1, for instance, our set b will be an empty set. Anyway, here, it's important to know if b is also a subset of a, since it only contains the elements x, but are also elements of a. Since we assumed that f is a subjection, it follows from its definition that there is some element in a, such that f of this element is our set b, since b is a subset of a and we can call this element zeta. If zeta is an element of b, then, according to the definition of the set b, zeta is not in its own image through f, but its image is b, and for this case, we've just assumed that it is an element of b. Thus, we get a contradiction. And if zeta is not an element of b, it's still following the definition of b, zeta is in its own image through f, but f of zeta is b, that is, zeta should be in the set b. Again, we get a contradiction. Since assuming that there is an f that is subjective brought as a contradiction, we must conclude that there can't be such an f. Take our f1 again. This function is always going to be injective. This is a very straightforward fact. And since we can't find a subjection from a to its power set, but we can easily find an injection from a to its power set, we can conclude that the cardinality of a power set of A is always greater than the cardinality of A. Hey, thanks for watching. I realize my explanation might have been a little bit confusing, but I hope it helps you at least to some level. Please, if you spotted any errors during the video, leave it down in the comments so that I can correct myself. Anyway, thanks once again and see you later.